Okay, guys, so this is 3 6 uh, from chapter 3. Um, so we're given a line charge with a uniform charge density PL. So PL is a line charge density. So it's the charge density of this circle in the problem. So the line charge, uniform charge density PL, forms a circle, we see here, uh, with a radius B. So our radius B. Uh, and it's on the XY plane, right, with its center at the origin. Okay, so that's how I was able to draw the shape, just from the information here. Um, and then for part A, it says find the electric field intensity E at the point 00H. So I drew this point 00H, and we're trying to find the electric field intensity here, and we're trying to find the electric field intensity due to the um, charge density on this line. So finding the E field intensity here due to the charge density that's affecting this point. Okay, so if you watch the intro, um, I kind of gave you guys a couple of different ways that you could do that. Uh, there's the direct E field calculation method, which is an option, or, um, again, another direct calculation method, you can use this um, equation to find potential, and then you can do the gradient of that potential. Uh, and in this case, that's just going to be using the Z component because we care about the, the voltage due to the displacement along the Z axis. So then doing this operation here, and that's going to help us solve for E. So uh, that's what we're gonna do for this problem here. So we're gonna start with this first equation for VP. Okay, and we're going to ask ourselves what we have and what we don't have, and we're going to find the pieces that we don't have. So here, okay, so we're given PL, right, from the problem, so we're given PL just the same. We need R and we need DL, okay? So our DL, uh, looking at our expression, so DL is a differential line, right? And it's going in a circle. So we have a differential line going in a circle, from our expression, how do we find the, the length of that differential line? Well, if we recall the arc length formula, we, if we have a radius and we multiply it by an angle, it's gonna give us the length of that arc, right? So for our DL, it would just be R dphi because that angle is what's changing, that's what's moving to give us the, the length. So we're going to choose a DL to be B D phi, and this is going to be common for just arc length in, in any kind of a circle. All right, next we need to find R. So this R is just the distance from your charged element to the point that you're trying to measure. So the distance from the charged element to the point you're trying to measure, you'll notice that from any point on the charged element to that point that we're given to measure, it's going to be the same for that R. So in this case, we just had to use the Pythagorean theorem to find it, so B squared plus H squared, Take the square root, that's our r. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug those into our general equation and kind of simplify it and solve some things here. So one over four pi, e naught, and then we, I'm gonna pull out this pl, uh, and I'm gonna pull out pl, and then we have one over r, right? pl times one over r, which is b squared plus h squared, square root of that, then multiplied by our DL, right, which is B, D, C prime. And this little prime notation just means that um, it's the change along the charged element. So if you see this little prime notation, like R prime, uh, it's the vector at the charged element. And it'll make a little more sense later if that's not super clear right now. Okay, so we only have one differential piece, this D phi, which means that's the only thing that's gonna have bounds. So if we look at our phi range for our charged line for our DL, well, for our charged element, our phi is going to go from zero to two pi because we have a full charged circle. So we're gonna plug in zero to two pi for our charged element. Okay, so integrating that and simplifying, we have one over four pi naught times PL uh, times, I'm gonna just uh, write this in a different way because I think it's easier squared plus h squared to the negative one half, right? And our d phi, uh, we're just going to end up with b times 2 pi, right? Because top bound multiplied by 2 pi, bottom bound multiplied by 0, that whole piece would be 0. So it'd be like this minus 0. I'm just going to drop it out. Uh, okay, so we can simplify a little bit here because we have 2 pi and 4 pi. So we have vp is equal to pl over 2 e naught. Uh, multiplied by b times b squared plus h squared to the negative one half. Okay, so that's our solution for v here. So as I said before, when we do this 
um, gradient of V operation, we're only going to look at the Z direction for this. Uh, this would You would actually also only look at the Z direction if you were doing a charged disk. Uh, say that this was like filled in and you had a disk surface. Just keep that in mind. Um, but before we do that, we're going to switch our H to the Z coordinate system. So H is equal to Z here um, because this equation has us doing things in terms of a partial derivative for Z. Okay, so we're going to swap out VP is equal to PL over 2E naught times B uh, times B squared plus we're swapping out Z here, Z squared, right? Um, to a negative one half. Okay, this is the same. So what we want to do uh, is we want to find uh, our E field, right? Because that's what the problem is asking us to find. And our E field is equal to the negative uh, gradient of our VP. So that's going to be, in this case, equal to the partial with respect to z of our expression for vp in the z hat direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the derivative with respect to z for our expression. So we're going to pull out all of our constants uh, first, just because I think that that's a little easier. So anything that doesn't have a z term, we're going to take it to the outside, pl over 2 e naught multiplied by b, right? Uh, and then we're going to have the derivative with respect to z of b squared plus z squared, right, uh, to be negative one half, and all of that in the z hat direction. Okay, so if we recall the chain rule, I'm just going to copy and move this over. Oop. Uh, copy. Okay, so if we recall the chain rule here, um, we know that we can, uh, we're going to take the derivative of the outside first and then the inside second. So just employing the chain rule here. Okay, so, all right, so it's going to turn into our constant piece still here. This doesn't change, right? I'm going to take this guy, and this is multiplied by, um, first, the derivative of the outside. So chain rule. For those of you who forgot, please Google this. Super important. Um, okay, so chain rule. So we're going to have negative 1 half b squared plus z squared, right? So negative 1 half minus 1, because that's how we do our outer derivative. That's going to be multiplied by 2z, OK? Because uh, we did the derivative of the inside. So the derivative uh, outside, and then multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So again, that's the chain rule. OK, so if we simplify that a little bit, we can see our e is going to be equal to pl over 2e naught multiplied by b. We can cancel out that 2 up here, right? Cancel, cancel. All right, and then we're going to end up with um, multiplied by z times uh, b squared plus z squared, right, to the negative 3 halves. Okay, so that's our expression for our e-field here. And I pre-wrote it up down below. Let's make sure that that is correct. And uh, yeah, that looks, that looks good. So negative 3 halves is just 1 over, um, 1 over this expression to the 3 halves, this one right here in case you're confused with that. So if we wanted to simplify that a little bit more, 